Okay. Hello and good evening, everyone. Um, I just got done grooming Charlie. I groomed her sister, Roxy, first, and Roxy is the sweet one. So it's like the angel and the devil. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I don't want to call her a devil. I mean, that's kind of in, 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 uh, insensitive <clears throat> because Charlie has a story um, and a reason why she is the, reason, the way she is. Um, but she did much better this time than the first time. The first time it was really she fought much more for you know shaving her body down, um, and I I felt like she fought less for her face last time than when I scissor around her face. But um, Brandon, the, her father, her dad was telling me that maybe it's because she fought so hard on her body when we were trying to trim her body down last time. By the time we got to her face, maybe she was just worn out. <clears throat> so that could be it. But. Um, I just wanted to share why Charlie is the way she is and because I think it's important to understand why she behaves the way she does so that we can be more accepting of her um, and just let go of our expectations of how she should behave or how she should act you know like no when we understand her story so five years ago um, her her parents Brandon and uh, Christina um, they drove up, they, they were looking, they had their dog Roxy, and they were looking for another dog to, you know, be like a partner, a playmate for her, for their dog. And they found Charlie um, on, you know, one of the rescue sites and to adopt. And so they drove eight hours up to Georgia, Kennesaw, Georgia, I believe. And it was at like a PetSmart or Petco, they can't remember for sure, but it was one of the big box stores where they were holding the adoption event. And <clears throat> she was a little bit grown out, a little bit more grown out than she is today, like how we shaved her down with the uh, seven. And so she was a little bit longer than a seven um, because they had uh, just recently shaved her down when they got her. They showed her them pictures of how they found her and she was dreaded, just a big, long, matted mess. You know, how you would pic see a picture a dog that's just unkept, uncared for, neglected. That's how she looked. And they, they um, said that you know they, when they sedated her for her to spay her, that's when they shaved her down. So that's the only grooming experience she had um, when you know as far as that rescue shelter was concerned, right? So they didn't really know how she behaved for grooming, and they weren't really honest with that with you know her parents about her all her issues that she came with. They just told her that the foster parents she she got returned several times, um, and the fosters you know would return her because she barked a lot and things like that. They didn't really, they didn't tell her them honestly how aggressive she was <clears throat> and that she got returned several times mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she bites hard <clears throat> and she goes full on attack mode. And I guess, you know, because they wanted to get her adopted, you know, they, they just didn't, they weren't honest with her, with, with them. And so at the hotel room, he's, he, you know, Brandon was saying that she was okay in the hotel room, you know, and then during the car ride back, she was all right, you know, just not overly friendly or anything, just really shy and qu quiet, you know, so they didn't really think much of it, right? They're just, you know, just let's just give her time to get used to us. When they brought her home, that's when her true colors came out, and that's when all the issues started to show. She was, you know, like, anything. She said that, um, that when Brandon, when the, when the, her, the dad would, um, when the owner would try to would take his belt off, she would flip out. She would get aggressive. Um, when they would move anything, any sudden movements, anything would set her off and she would growl and bite her and show her teeth. And she said, <clears throat> uh, Christina was saying that she, she actually wanted to take her back, you know, and Brandon too, he was like, what do we get ourselves into? You know, I don't think we can handle a dog like this, you know? And, you know, and, and like other people were telling them, like, just maybe work with her, give her time, you know, let's, let, you know, hire a trainer and behaviorists and stuff. So they hired behaviorists, they, they went through some behaviorists and trainers and just, she's just, and, and, they, and some, some people actually gave them some really bad advice. Um, this one guy was saying, like, you have to scruff her, and, you know, and, um, establish your dominance and let her know who's boss and show her she can't act like that. And like scruff her, talk, and throw her across the room, you know, like hit her with the newspaper things like that and it's like it only made it worse because it, like when she's sleeping and you try to wake her up or something ah you know she she and you know, like she, she, she never really sleeps they said that she always like, sleeps with one eye open she can never really just let go and relax she's always on edge so the thing is she was like four or five years old when they adopted her so the four or five years who knows what happened in her life you know 
and it's almost like a like suffering from post traumatic stress disorder you know like PTSD she's probably reliving the trauma whatever happened to her that caused her to m mistrust people that caused her to feel like she has to fight for her life because that really is how she behaves when we groom her she she behaves as if she's fighting for her life she attacks me like she thinks I'm gonna hurt her or kill her um, <clears throat> Laura Cass hi you thank you for being so oh, I have to be kind to her right I have to be understanding because something happened in her life that we don't know in the first four or five years of her life something traumatic happened and changed and Christina actually brought up a really good point she was like if we cloned her if we took her DNA and cloned her there's a very good possibility she would be a very sweet and loving dog because there are moments where she is very sweet and affectionate and she wants to be loved but then She'll, you know, she'll kind of you know want you to pet her, but if you move too quickly or pet her too fast, she'll bite. And it's almost like she she looks like I'm sorry I did that. You know she feels guilty. You know like she doesn't want to bite. It's just you know something happened and she wants to actually be loved. She wants to bond, but then like she, but then something causes her to not really trust fully. You know. So because we don't know what happened to her, we have to be accepting. And understanding that this is just who she is this is just who she's become because not not even of her choice something caused her to you know it, it broke her trust something broke her trust in in people and even other dogs you know because um, they're saying so fast forward a year <clears throat> a year they, they had her for a year now right no well, now they've had her about five years this was five years ago but they're saying um, you know they've been working with her and so now fast forward a year they have her a year already and they've kind of bonded with her they've had moments where you know she looks into their eyes affectionately and you know now she and then she she had gotten in a fight with Roxy her their older dog and bit her eye caused to bleed and they had to take her to the vet and everybody was telling them you got to get rid of her you got to put her down because you can't adopt you can't put take her back to a rescue shelter or anything i mean she's got real issues she's very super aggressive and they're like nobody's going to be able to handle that you know um you got to you got to put her down even the vets have trouble with her you know and they they just do the very bare minimum and they can't even put a muscle on her and they tried Xanax, it only makes her worse they tried ace prednis like they tried all of these other uh, sedate sedatives um, and they were saying that the vet even said that it's almost like dealing with the angry drunk because she's fighting off the sed sedation she's fighting the med medication and now she's even more mad and so it's like dealing with the angry drunk and so they stopped giving her sedatives they stopped the Xanax you know because it just doesn't work it's not effective with her so Liz how are you Liz you're amazing with her she broke my heart yeah right it's, it is heartbreaking because there's nothing we can really do to really, you know, convince her to calm down. We just got to work with it, you know. We just have to accept it, accept the worst case scenario. This is just how she is, right? Something happened. So now a year, the, a year has gone by, and they have, they're, they've been dealing with a lot of her issues. They've been working with her. They've been, you know, going through behaviors and trainers. Some good, some not so good. Some gave her, some gave them some really bad advice. Um, like trying to establish your dominance over a s extremely scared terrified dog and that she's she's lashing out and being aggressive because she's terrified she's scared for her life for whatever reason it doesn't make sense to us but in her brain it makes sense right um, to try to establish your dominance over her hit her with a, a newspaper scruff her and toss her I mean they said that she would come right back and fight even harder you know, it's like so. None of these, none of these dominance techniques are are helpful to a dog that's suffering from. I mean, for for lack of better, like post traumatic stress disorder, it's it's like PTSD that humans suffer from, and so. Fast forward a year later, um, she's attacked their other dog, and she's she's attacked other people. She's bitten their owner, the owners, um, who's trying to show that show her with everything they do that they love and care about her and they're trying to give her a good life um, but it's just so hard to you take her to the vet is a huge challenge because of how difficult she she is and how dangerous her aggression is get t trying to get her groomed and she's a she's a shizu so it's not like it's not like a dachshund or something or chihuahua where you know okay if she doesn't like grooming we can just you know not groom her then she's a long-haired dog and so she needs regular grooming so it's unavoidable 
And there, were, she's saying that there was one groomer who was um, willing to work with her, and she was able to get her body shaved, and she wasn't able to do her head at all because of how dangerous she is. Um, but then she retired. She groomed her once, got her body done, the head, she just had to leave it, and then she retired. And all the other groomers just flat out refuse. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them because it is a huge liability. And she acts so crazy and so vicious. Now look at that. She, she got my hand, my finger. So last time she bit up all my fingers and I finally put the welding gloves on because I realized she was not playing around. And even through the welding gloves, it hurts when she bites so hard. So I had the welding glove off of my right hand so I could scissor her and she got me with the scissors in my hand. So that's one place she got me. She got her owner a couple times on the knuckles. <clears throat> but so a year after having her for a year, her, their family, their friends, everybody is telling them, you got to put her down. Even the vet was like, you know, I, let's, just, let's just put her down, you know. And so they're like, they just felt so wrong about that. You know, Brandon was even saying like, if, you know, she's like a family member now. And just because like, if you have a kid with autism or something, and he has these aggressive tendencies sometimes, these aggressive episodes, and you know, like if you have a family member that's kind of a problem sometimes because of the way they behave or you know something wrong with their brain he's like would you kill them would you just, just tell them they don't deserve to live because because you know they act aggressively when they're getting groomed or go to the vets or you know when they go to the doctor or when they go get their hair cut you know because they can't behave well do they deserve to die you know and and Brandon's such a good guy he was saying that even if all they can do is just give her somewhat of a comfortable life you know and give her moments of happiness and joy and even if her life is cut short you know and she even if she doesn't live for a long time because she doesn't go to the vet often and all this stuff he was like it's still it's still worth it to try to give her a good life right and not give up on her and not just put her put her down not just kill her because she has these issues that aren't that's not even her fault something happened to her something broke her inside you know and now she feels like she's always has to protect herself that everything's a threat Some, you know she always feels like she has to fight for her life especially when she's getting groomed or when she's at the vet's office when people are kind of invading her personal space and touching her and she just doesn't like it and he was like would you would you kill a family member just because they're like that I'm like you know they can't give up on her you know <clears throat> so um then they started to try to groom them, groom her on their own. But they, you know, he's saying that he can hold her, but you know, Christina, she's not, she's not a professional groomer, you know, and she gets nervous with holding the scissors and the shears and everything. Even a professional groomer, it's not easy, <laughs> right? Even, even somebody who is experienced as a, as a dog groomer, there's a, still a very good chance that you can accidentally nick, you know, when she's spinning and turning, you can accidentally poke her in the eye with the scissors. I mean, she actually uh, got the scissors a couple times, but it was good. Good thing I was using the blending shears, not the not the shears with the pointed tip, because then that would have really you know cut her. But because it was the blunt, the flat edge tip, it just you know hit her hit her mouth, you know hit her tooth a little bit. And then one time she bit down on it, but you know she bit down on the scissors when it was closed. And I looked at, I checked her mouth, and it wasn't bleeding. So even with an experienced groomer. And I am confident with my with my scissor control and, and clipper control. Even for me, it was difficult with Brandon holding her. So I don't blame I don't blame them for not being able to groom her themselves, and I don't blame other groomers for saying no. I'm not touching that. Right? It's just I feel like you know <clears throat> someone's got to do something though. Right? Uh, Laura Cassidy. I just don't understand why anybody would hurt an animal. Imagine that poor little thing can never be at peace in her mind. Exactly. And most people are good. Most people are good people. This earth, this world is filled with kind, caring, compassionate people. But every once in a while, there is that bad apple where somebody hurt people hurt people, right? So whatever hurt that person inside, maybe a bad childhood, maybe they were abused or assaulted as a kid or something, they, they I don't know, some people are just why are different and they like when maybe she snapped or something because she is very strong-willed she has a you know she has a very strong will some might call it stubborn 
um, but maybe she just you know said no I'm not doing that for whatever thing I don't know and then you know that maybe that person felt like you know like the dog trainer that told them like establish your dominance you don't tell me and like you know grabbed her roughly maybe threw her maybe kicked her who knows but I think it's very telling that um, when when Brandon when they first brought her and, and whenever he would like take his belt off after work and he would take his belt out of his pants she would flip, flip out you know that's that's got to tell us something right I mean maybe the, her previous owner would hit her with the belt who knows but I just you know so how did I become their dog groomer so back in um, April is when Christina emailed me and told me that they have this dog that they rescued about four, four or five years ago, uh, five years ago, and she was about four or five years old at the time that they adopted her. She came with all of these aggression issues. She doesn't trust anyone. She she acts out aggressively because she's so scared, and she was saying that it keeps her up at night, you know, because she's so worried about her dog and she wants to get her dog, you know, at least comfortable, get all the mats out of her face and out of her coat, you know, so she's not matted and looking bad and you know like and, and people can be so in, in, insensitive and in, inconsiderate and they'll be like oh your dog needs grooming oh your dog looks you know and, and it makes them feel bad like they're not good owners or something and they're trying their best and <clears throat> there's you know they're just running out of solutions they're running out of options and I just I, you know when I read that email I was like I want to help them I, I, I know I can help them so we, we set up a date in July it was like the last weekend in July and I, I came down here and then self-doubt and I was scared I was like what if I'm not able to do it you know and then when I saw her and I saw how aggressive she was and I just I was like oh man I don't think I'm gonna stream this you know because I was gonna stream it originally in July <clears throat> but I was like I don't know because first of all I wasn't sure if I could actually do it um, and I didn't want to publicly embarrass myself on YouTube I was afraid of the trolls um, bashing the owners for the condition that she was in and how she was acting I was afraid that people might call me an uh, animal abuser because I have to stay patient and persistent to try to get her haircut done um, and she's acting terrified and crazy and it's hard to watch it's hard to go through I was afraid that she might accidentally get hurt or injured you know and I just didn't want all these I, I was just scared I was scared to, to stream it live on YouTube um, but I was able to get it done last time, and she she was fine. She was safe. You know, when when it was over, she it was a lot worse than it was today. I streamed it live today, but the first time was worse than it when when you know t what you saw today. Um, but we were able to get it done safely. She wasn't injured. She was she she wasn't overly stressed. Like we didn't we didn't throw her over into like having a seizure or, or you know, you know like getting overwhelmed with stress. You know. Um, and when she was done, she was happy, she was comfortable, just like today. She was like so, so comfortable and just relaxed. Because once it was over, she realized the threat is, is gone, you know, and I'm not going to touch her anymore, you know, and she was, she was actually pretty happy. She took a treat from me, and she just laid on her do little doggy bed, you know, and she watched us talking with each other. We were having a great conversation, and they were telling me more about, about her backstory and what happened. And... She was just watching us, and she was looking at me, but it wasn't like fearful or even angry eyes. It was just this like more curious eyes, just just curious about me, you know, almost, and they said that it almost looks like sad eyes or something, you know, but she was just watching me, and when I went, when I went, walked by her even, she didn't growl. She actually came up and watched me leave. She didn't growl or bark. She just watched me leave, and I was like, bye, Charlie, and she just, she just sat there and watched me. She was probably just trying trying to make sense of it like what this guy's so strange you know like I bit him like crazy and he didn't he didn't retaliate he didn't get mad he angry with me you know and and she realized that I'm not gonna give up just because she acts like that and bites me I'm not gonna give up but I'm not gonna hurt her either you know even though she's hurting me I'm not gonna hurt her in return like I'm not a threat you know that's what I want her to know <clears throat> and it was it was amazing and so tomorrow morning before I leave I'm gonna stop by and just hang out with her a little bit um, hang out with Brandon and Christina again <clears throat> just so that she sees that I'm not a threat you know when I come I'm not always gonna groom her you know so tomorrow I'm just gonna go and just relax you know maybe just have you know lunch with them or you know breakfast or whatever you know just 
just hang out with them. So she gets used to me being around. She gets comfortable with my presence. She gets, com you know, comfortable with me. And then I'm gonna drive back up to Atlanta. <clears throat> but yeah, so that's how that's how it all happened. Um, and you know, uh, we we scheduled her for three months out. So in January, January 25th, I'm gonna be coming back that weekend to groom her again. And you know, I think it is. I think I think she's gonna behave a little better the third time, because this time was better than the first time. And she's not. She's not psychotic, even though she acts like that because she gets in that red zone. She's totally scared for her life, even though she acts psychotic. She's not psychotic, you know. Um, there's she's she does learn and she remembers and so um and and you saw with brandon she doesn't really bite him isn't that so weird even though she's in that frantic you know terrified state of mind you would think that she wouldn't be able to distinguish or discriminate between you know she would just bite you know just everything and everybody but no <clears throat> when when brandon's there he, he puts his face in front of hers even, even when she's like going like that, and he's like, it's okay, you know? And she doesn't bite him. You know, even when she does bite him, she ah, stops. You can even see her kind of stop and stop herself. She doesn't full on bite, clamp down like she does with me. And that's why I have to wear those welding gloves. Because even with the welding gloves, it hurts. Um, you know, like, but it doesn't break skin. You know, she only broke skin this one time because I had the gloves off so I could use the scissors. But isn't that interesting? So, and then there was one point in the groom today where Brandon felt it and I felt it. She just like sighed. I was trying to get the neck hair here with the with the clippers. She just was fighting, 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 and we were just you know working with her, just trying to keep her calm, telling her it's all right, Charlie, it's okay. And then finally, you could feel her really tense, and then she goes, she just kind of sighs, and then you could feel like the fight just leave her for a moment. And, and I was able to do it. I was like, oh, good girl. And I was able to, you know, um, get her neck and everything shaved down. And then all of a sudden she got like a second win and she started fighting again. But there was a moment there where she just kind of let go for a moment. She just kind of surrendered. And that gives me a lot of hope. You know, like there's a chance that we can get through to her, that she doesn't have to fight like this, you know, that we're not going to hurt her. Nothing bad's going to happen. So in January will be my third time trying it. And I think, especially because the first time I, did, I groomed her, I went back the next day and spent some time with them. And then I went back home. Tomorrow, I'm going to go back, spend some time with them, and then, you know, leave. And so then when I come back in January, I'm not going to be a complete stranger. Even today, she kind of knew what was up. Well, as soon as I came, you know, walked through those doors, she knew what was up. She remembered me. And so um, in January, I'm sure she's going to remember the experience she had with me this time around you know and and she doesn't she didn't get hurt it wasn't as bad as the first time it didn't even take as long and so now the third time hopefully will be much better and you know and the thing is I um, I was telling Christina and Brandon you know what if she never gets better because they were like do you think she you know this possible there's some hope that she'll get better and I was like you know, <clears throat> what I like to do is um, use Dale Carnegie's formula. Dale Carnegie and the book um, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. It's an amazing book, uh, but it's by Dale Carnegie. How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. He says, accept the worst case scenario. Just accept it. Ask yourself realistically. Don't make it worse than it is. Don't make it, but don't kid yourself and make it better than it is. Accept the situation for what it is. Just look at it objectively and ask yourself, What's the worst case scenario? Well, in Charlie's case, worst case scenario, she doesn't get better. She's always gonna act like this for every groom. Okay, let's accept that. Now we can try to work on how to how we can, you know, try to calmly work on improving that situation. First, accept the worst case situation, right? She's never gonna get better. This is just how she's gonna be. Okay, let's accept that, and now think of ways to try to improve upon the worst case scenario. Right? And we were thinking, well, the last time when she fought so hard for her body being shaved and, and trimmed down, when we started working on her head, she didn't fight as much as she did today, probably because she was worn out and tired. And so we were thinking, okay, so in January, the next time I come, let's take her for a nice long walk. You know, maybe you can take her to the dog park, let her run around, and then, and then we'll groom her after she's tired, physically, you know, wear some of that energy out, right? 
and then she won't she won't fight as much because we you know got rid of a lot of that energy right and so uh, kind of wear her out first you know take her on a long walk you know make her you know burn those calories and then once she's tired then we'll get her on the grooming table and we'll just be nice and calm and you know work on her calmly and even though she is gonna bite she is gonna fight it you know it hopefully won't be as bad because uh, first of all this will it'll be her third time with me and she saw that the first two times she didn't get away with it but she, she didn't get hurt either you know nothing bad happened if anything she got a lot of praise she's happy you know she's comfortable now and she got some treats you know she's realizing this isn't so, so bad it's not as bad as I thought right so the third time around hopefully she won't be as bad because she is more familiar with me she's more familiar with the process and um, she will be worn out physically because they're gonna walk her and you know get her tired and you know so you know I just told him like let's just let's just accept that this might be how it's always gonna be but you know we can try to just make it better wear gloves I was even telling Brandon maybe what I'll do is order some gloves on Amazon you know those like sushi gloves where you can cut you can run a knife over them but it doesn't cut through you know those like it's like the metal mesh gloves but you can still it's you know you can still move your fingers um, that, that chefs wear like sushi chefs so I was like you know maybe we can do, use those gloves and that way even though she does bite Brandon by accident you know sometimes she bites she got him a couple times like on the knuckles um, so because a lot of times it's hard to stay calm when it hurts when it's so painful it's that you, you sometimes you, f you get angry as a reaction because it hurts because it's so painful when they bite so if we can just remove that factor and even though she bites it doesn't hurt as much and she's not puncturing us or causing blood you know drawing blood then it's easier for us to remain calm and not react you know and so I have the welding gloves but maybe what I'll do is buy order some you know those uh, metal gloves as well that chefs use so I can put that on when I'm scissoring you know and Brandon can wear a pair when he's holding her um, and I was like let's just let's just think of ways that, to try to improve upon the worst case scenario and just accept the worst case scenario for what it is you know but I'm so I'm so grateful to have met them it inspires me to know that there are people out there like Brandon and Christina who have such big hearts who are so understanding and accepting you know cuz just to be honest not a lot of people would have stuck it out for five years with a dog like Charlie you know it would be so easy and understandable I don't think anybody can judge or I don't think anybody would judge anyone who says enough's enough we can't handle this and they decide to put her down I think even a vet would agree to that I think even a vet would be supportive of that decision you know like yeah this something happened to this dog and now this dog is forever like this and we you know it's it's too much for most people to handle and so they would just put her down that would be an understandable solution but Brandon has a heart of gold and so does Christina and they're not willing to give up on her and, and they consider her a member of their family now they've adopted her now that now she's their daughter and they're saying just because you have a child that doesn't behave the way you want them to would you would you kill them you know would you would you say that they deserve to die no you know because it's not even her fault that she's acting like this something happened so I just I told I told them like you guys really inspire me and I'm so happy mm -hmm. and grateful mm -hmm. that I'm that I'm able to come down and help you guys you know like um, Amy and Oz, God bless them and you for having the patience to love her through her pain yeah I mean yeah and, and Brandon I couldn't do it without Brandon seriously I, I told Brandon today like you're you know you're irreplaceable seriously and I was like I can't I wouldn't be able to do this without you holding her like that you know and, and helping me like it really would take two set of hands I mean she's impossible to control because because she's fighting for her life that's that's exactly how she behaves that, that's she's convinced that she's fighting for her life and so you know she needs someone like Brandon who she's tr grown to trust over time five years of him and she he was saying that he's taken so many bad bites from her but he just keeps trying and he's he tells her like we're just we're just gonna have to get over this you know you're my dog and I'm gonna 
you're gonna be get used to me touching you you know like you're gonna learn to trust me and I'm gonna learn to trust you and yeah and like he's just amazing he's incredible and and so is Christina you know they're both in, they're so incredible they're such an incredible couple with such a big warm caring hearts and without them Charlie would be dead let's just be honest real tough Charlie would be long gone by now if it was any other couple I mean, I don't want to say that with absolute, you know, conviction because who knows? There might be other people that would have worked with Charlie and they wouldn't have given up on her either. You know, it's very possible. But um, the chances are, you know, if I was a betting man, the odds are against her. You know, if I was a betting man, then, yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's pretty safe to assume. I would put my bet on she'd be toast <laughs> by now right and I don't blame other groomers for not wanting to touch her you know not wanting to work on her because yeah who you know who who wants to get bit it's not fun right and also the chance of her getting injured seriously injured today could have worked out very differently I'm so happy that that she's she's groomed safely and she's happy and she's comfortable she's sleeping right now she's taking a nice nap you know um, but you know, it could have easily gone the other way. I could be at the vet, you know, the emergency vet clinic with her parents right now because, she, you know, she got stabbed in the eye or something with the, with the scissors, you know, or she's bleeding, she needs stitches. You know, the, it could have easily gone the other way today, but I'm just so grateful it didn't. And a lot of the reason is because Brandon was there to help me, you know, and I have almost 10 years of experience grooming dogs. And that helps as well you know I was able to feel it and pull back and you know know when to scissor when the, when to keep it closed you know and keep the scissor po pointed away from her and you know <clears throat> but yeah it's this is what really makes me feel like my life is worth living you know because we're here for all of us right we're here to help each other and to know that I'm providing them with the real solution to a real problem that they're experiencing is a very unique problem, you know? And I can't help everyone out there, but I have a very unique set of skills where I can help this situation, you know? And I'm so happy, it makes me feel so, it makes me feel like I matter, you know? It makes me feel like I, I matter and I'm doing something that's that means something to someone, that's valuable to someone you know and that's why I make the drive down here because first of all I like road trips I like driving you know I always have and I love seeing the ocean oh my god I love coming down here so it, there are some selfish motivations <laughs> involved here it's not just you know just out of the goodness of my heart I admit and it makes me feel awesome when she's all done and they're happy and I see the joy in their eyes I see how happy and relieved they are and when they look at her they're like oh my god you're all you're all cleaned up now you're all trimmed up and now for the next three months they don't really have to worry about grooming you know and well they don't have to worry about grooming anymore anyways you know cuz I'm coming down here in January when she when she grows out again and I'll, I'll solve the problem for them again because I can and it makes me feel wonderful that I'm able to do that you know um, J cake I love driving in the ocean too oh my god right oh, man even though it was at night when I came in last night, just knowing that the ocean was there and seeing the reflection of the lights on the water, uh, you know, driving on I-4, oh my god, it just made me feel good. And the house that I'm staying in right now, um, it's like a lakefront property. So when I look out back, there's a lake right there. I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. It's like a mini vacation for me. Um, and I, I just feel so lucky that I, this is what I'm able to do. Um, and you know, honestly, Charlie is one of the m most extreme cases I've ever I've ever worked on. I've worked with a lot of aggressive dogs before, but she's she's probably up there, one of the worst case scenarios. Um, but hey, I I am uniquely qualified to help them, and it makes me feel wonderful. They texted me, oh my god, and they <sighs> they're just they make me feel so valued and appreciated, and that makes me feel so so good and it feels like my life is worth living you know that I that I matter to someone you know and there's just no there's no no it's no price you can put on that you know it's priceless the feeling 
of being able to groom Charlie safely. And she's not injured, and she's happy and comfortable now, and she's calm, and she's, you know, sleeping, and she feels good. The feeling is priceless, indescribable. Just the rewarding feeling that you get because it was so difficult, you know? And knowing that I helped Brandon and Christina, who are such great people with such big hearts, so caring, so understanding, so accepting of all of Charlie's issues that she came to them with, you know? And they were not prepared for this. They were not prepared for this because the rescuers in the organization, they never told them about any of Charlie's issues. All they told them was she kept getting returned because she was she would bark a lot. Come on. And and Christina was even saying like, well, dogs bark, you know? She was like she was she just told herself, you know, we can we can work with that, you know, dogs bark. We could just, you know, kind of work with that and just teach her not to bark, you know? That's no problem. Shoot, if that was all that if that was all that was wrong with her, I mean, yeah, you know, we I wouldn't be here right now. And I understand the rescue organizations trying to get her adopted out. I understand, but I mean, it almost feels like a used car salesman tactic, you know? It, it just doesn't feel ethical to me, you know? I know they didn't break any laws. What they did wasn't illegal. It wasn't unlawful, but maybe un unethical, right? Just kind of throwing this problem, extreme, extremely difficult, challenging dog, just giving it to an innocent couple that that is no, in no way prepared for for this and then when they drive eight hours back down to Florida and they take they let her in their house now they see that they have this demonic dog <laughs> you know like what you know like they said that all that she does is bark <laughs> she does a lot more than just bark you know so I just you know but hey everything happens for a reason right I think everything happens for a reason they were meant to go up there and get lied to it's because you know, Caesar Milan says, we don't always get the dog we want, but we always get the dog we need, you know? And I think Charlie needed them. And maybe, you know, maybe in some way, you know, by by having her and, being, and then getting connected with me, and now we have a, um, a friendship that we're building, you know? And I really, I really do. I feel like, I feel like we're, we're becoming really good friends, Brandon and Christina and I, because we just have a lot in common. You know, like, whenever I talk to them, whenever I hang out with them, I feel like, wow, I really enjoy our conversations, and we have a lot in common, you know? And so, anyways, I think I think everything does happen for a reason, and I'm, I'm just so happy and grateful that everything worked out. I was able to come down here and actually be the solution to somebody's problem. It makes me feel amazing. Um, Jay Cake says, can't put a price on that. Such a fulfilling feeling. Yes, right? And, um, you know, because they were saying that they were willing to drive up to Atlanta to bring her to me. But I was like, if I'm going to be completely honest, I kind of like coming down here. You know, it's like a little vacation. And I have a couple of friends that I'm actually going to meet up in about an hour. Um, they're friends from high school. And we just had our 20-year high school reunion up in Tennessee. And they weren't able to make it, you know, because, you know, shoot, it's, in, it's up in North Tennessee, near the Kentucky border, where our school is, where we graduated 20 years ago. And they're down here in Orlando working. And so, you know, they weren't able to make it up. Um, but they wanted to meet tonight. I was like, yeah, you know. So anyways, I'm really excited to go and catch up with them. It's been like 20 years since I've seen them. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. And, you know, since I have friends down here, and there's also Ashley with Ashley's Pack. She has a grooming shop down here in Orlando. You know, so next time I come down in, in January, since I, you know, I, I originally was going to meet up with her tonight and hang out, um, but, you know, I haven't seen my, my, my high school, you know, classmates in like 20 years. You know, I just wanted to catch up with them. And we were really close. We were a really close class because we were kind of a small class. Um, so anyways, I'm really excited about that. But yeah, every time I come down here to Orlando, there's people that I can hang out with. There's things to do. You know, I feel like this is a little vacation for me. So, and, you know, it's... It's just wonderful. I feel so grateful, seriously, that for the past nine years, it was difficult to, to gain the skill set that I have, you know, but I now have a unique skill set of skills, and I'm uniquely qualified to come down here and help, you know, Charlie and her, her owners, and because of that, I, I can use this as an opportunity to just, you know, have a little mini vacation down in Florida every three months, you know, and, it, and I can't spend a lot of time. I actually have to get up tomorrow. Um, you know, go back up to Georgia, 
on Monday, I have a dog um, I'm going to groom in coming, and she's a new client. She reached out to me because her dog, something traumatic happened at a, at a pet grooming uh, salon, and she came back nicked, bleeding, and her personality completely changed, and now she's kind of, she poses some challenges and difficulties when it comes to time to groom her now. And they've tried groomers. She's tried grooming her herself, and finally, she a friend of hers told her about me, so she reached out to me and messaged me privately. And so I'm going to be grooming her dog on Monday, Monday afternoon. And um, yeah, so isn't that awesome? And actually, driving down here, even uh, somebody called me, and she reached out to me because she has a, a little micro doodle, like an eight pound doodle, and she was saying that he was he was such an angel and. She would have to stop him from running up and trying to greet every dog and every person that she saw or he saw because he's just so happy and so loving and he just loved everyone, loved life. Like my dog Weemie, you know? And he's just so happy and innocent, like a happy-go-lucky dog. But then one day she picked him up at the groomers and he was shaking, shivering, whining, and she never saw him like that before. And He was shaved down completely and you know like she was like so worried about him and, and like he was crying and then um like that night she's saying he, he was he was different ever since that day something changed and now he shows him, her his teeth when he was sleeping she, he was like kind of whimpering like he was having a bad dream and so she tried to wake him up and he snapped at her bit her showed growled and showed her his teeth and she was like this is not my dog I mean, he's never she was saying before you could step on his tail by accident. He would have never, never reacted aggressively, but now he he um, growls at people, shows people his teeth. He doesn't he doesn't want to meet people anymore. Where before she would have to stop him from wanting to run and greet everybody, and other dogs he would growl at them. And he just, he was a completely changed dog. This was two months ago, and so she said for the past two months. You know, when she tries to pick him up, he, he gets aggressive. You know, when he when she tries to move, you know wake him up from his, when he's having a bad dream, he'll get aggressive. And so now she can't even sleep with him in her bed anymore because if she moves or something while he's sleeping, he'll bite her, you know? So something happened, and he's suffering from a, like a dog version of post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, he's having bad dreams, and he doesn't trust people anymore or dogs. Because before, he didn't have a reason not to trust anyone. Of course he loved everyone. But something happened. And I always tell people, how many times does something really bad have to happen to someone before they, they change? Something that changes them inside, you know? It only has to happen once, you know? So, yeah, um, not this Friday. I think next Friday, November 8th, I'm going to go and um, groom him. And this is this is why I groom. I told her I am so happy you contacted me because I'm actually not really taking new clients. I, I actually fit her in, you know, a day where someone else rescheduled, and I also have to go to another per client's dog right after that. So I don't really have room to take new clients. But I was like, I have to take you because this is the reason why I groom dogs. I don't want to just groom easy dogs that that just stay still for you and they're really easy to do. And I want to groom these dogs that need a little extra understanding and acceptance and compassion someone who knows that this dog is behaving this way because something happened and now this dog is d distrustful he un you know he just doesn't trust people anymore and he doesn't behave well he might be aggressive and you know growl and show his teeth and bite he might do that when I'm grooming him but understanding that now I have to take the extra time put in the extra effort to try to gain his trust and show him that it's not always going to be like that and it can be better try to get him to reassociate grooming with a good experience you know and and trust being touched by a human being by another human again you know and this is I feel like this is my calling you know this is what makes me feel like I have a purpose in my life you know the on Japanese call it ikigai you know, not not icky guy like like he's a like he's a pervert or something like he's an icky guy. No, it's icky guy. I k i g a i icky guy. It means your purpose for living, your reason for being alive. And I really feel like this is my icky guy. This is my purpose for living. This is my my calling. You know, to use my my skills, my ability to groom dogs, 
my ability to connect with them and be compassionate and understanding and patient with them use this set of skills who I am to help people not everybody because most dogs are easy most dogs are no problem to groom so I just want to help people who really need that extra you know help with the really difficult dog you know not even any fault of the dogs you know it's not any fault of their own something happened and now I have the opportunity to use my skills my experiences to help and I I just think that that's that's why we're here right because life is short and at the end of our lives I don't think it's gonna be about you know how much your net worth is how many material things you you accumulated how many awards you won or accolades you've gotten how much recognition you got I don't think I don't think life is gonna be about that you know in the end in the final analysis I think it's gonna be about did I live the kind of life that I can be proud of and by doing things like this helping people with their troubled dogs it makes me feel like you know I'm living a, the kind of life that I can feel proud of anyways um, I better get ready to go meet my friends and hopefully um, that kind of gives you a little bit of idea of why Charlie acted the way she did today and why she is the way she is and how it came how all of this came to be you know so they've had her for five years now she's getting older you know and so you know hopefully as I continue to come down here and continue to groom her every three months hopefully maybe in a year or two because that'll be what about four to eight grooms in a year or two from now you know hopefully after about two years of just you know repeating this process hopefully she'll she'll learn to be better about it you know and you know and I can keep continuing to help other dogs you know well of course continue grooming from Charlie as well because you know just honestly even if she does stop attacking me and she learns to be okay with the groom um, and let's say I get to the point where Brandon doesn't need to even help me out anymore she just trusts me um, trust is not transferable so just because she's learned to trust me and I can groom her I just accepting of her understanding and be compassionate and just every time make sure I don't do anything to break her trust in me you know well she already doesn't trust me now but I'm slowly earning some more trust every time I come and groom her and hang out with her after the groom go back the next day and just hang out and then leave she's learning to trust me a little bit more she doesn't bark at me so much anymore when I was leaving she didn't bark at me she didn't growl at me nothing so she's learning to trust me a little bit I'm, we're making baby steps so you know once I get to the point where she trusts me um, you know it's good for me but I can't be like okay she's good now now you can hire another groomer you know because that groomer is gonna have to go through the same thing so anyway hopefully this kinda gives you a little bit of insight into dog grooming and difficult dogs and things like that and just and why Charlie is the way she is and there is hope even though everyone says that she's impossible to groom it's difficult but it's not impossible nothing is impossible even the word itself spells I'm possible right so you know just hopefully this was inspiring helpful and also insightful see you guys